Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist based in Vienna, Austria. The Polar OH1 Plus is an optical heart rate sensor that Polar markets as an alternative to their ECG-based chest straps, like their flagship heart rate monitor, the Polar H10. The smaller OH1 Plus is arguably easier to use and more comfortable to wear, but do its heart rate measurements agree with the heart rate measurements of the Polar H10 chest strap? Well, that's what I'll test in this video by looking at 25 different training sessions. Specifically, I'll compare the heart rate as recorded with the OH1 Plus against the Polar H10 chest strap that I used on myself, but I'll also use data that a subscriber provided to me, where he used the Garmin chest strap and compared it with the Polar OH1 Plus. In my analysis, I'm assuming that heart rate measured using a chest strap is most accurate, since these use ECG and can actually detect the distinct electrical signals originating from the heart. The OH1 Plus uses optical sensors, or PPG, similar to what you find in most smartwatches. These basically measure the changes in the size of the blood vessels under your skin. I will first show you an overview of the Polar OH1 Plus's heart rate accuracy as compared against the Polar A10 chest strap followed by some examples of what specifically went right and what went wrong. Now, let's dive into the results. Here you can see an overall overview of the heart rate consistency between the Polar H10 chest strap on the horizontal axis and the Polar OH1 Plus on the vertical axis. Each dot here is a single heart rate measurement, and if you go to the horizontal axis, you can see the heart rate of the Polar H10, and if you go to the vertical axis, you can see the heart rate according to the Polar OH1+. If heart rate measurements are along this blue line here, this means there's perfect agreement between the Polar OH1+, and the Polar H10 chest strap. I made each point here very transparent because we have so many measurements, but if there's multiple measurements in a single location, the color will turn darker. So we can see here, for instance, this was probably during weightlifting where I have a medium heart rate. There are more measurements here, so the color will turn darker. And especially here in this higher heart rate range, we see there's a lot of overlapping points and they're all along this blue line. The overall impression I get from this plot is that most of the time the Polar H10 and the Polar OH1 Plus agree very well. Especially in this higher heart rate range, we can see there's very good agreement between the two. There's many, many points here and they're all overlapping here along the blue line. It's here in this medium heart range, which I will usually have during weightlifting, where there might be some deviations. We see this small cloud of points here that's away from the blue line. But overall, this is a first very positive sign that there's good agreement between the Polar OH1 Plus and the Polar H10. But we need to go through a few individual training sessions to make sure there's no weird artifacts. So let's first look at a few spinning sessions. Now spinning I would consider one of my main sports, I do this almost every day, and I usually divide my training into four segments where I take a small break in between. And that's what you see here too. So this is an individual training session with time along the horizontal axis and my heart rate along the vertical axis. And in red I plotted the Polar OH1 Plus, and in blue we have the reference which is the Polar H10 chest strap. Overall we can see there's a very nice agreement between the two. The red and the blue line nicely overlap, only here there's a slight delay with the Polar OH1 being slightly behind in the heart rate increase that the Polar H10 detected, but overall this looks very good. But let's look at a few more training sessions to make sure that it's consistently good. Now here we see another training session, again with three breaks in between, and again the heart rate increases and decreases look very good, there's very nice overlap between the OH1 and the H10. And if you look at some other training sessions, for instance this one here, again we see very nice agreement, only this small deviation here, but this is negligible. And also for this training session here, very nice agreement. And basically all of the training sessions look like this. There's always a very nice overlap between the OH1 Plus and the H10. There's only this training session here where there's a slight shift between the two, but I expect this is due to a timekeeping error of the smartphone that I use to record the data. Now let's move on to weightlifting. Now what I've seen with weightlifting in the past is that a lot of optical sensors have trouble with the sudden spike in heart rate that you get with a lot of exercises. Now let's have a look. Now here we have one weightlifting session and again in red is the OH1 Plus and in blue is the chest strap our reference the Polar H10. And as I mentioned there's a lot of spikes in heart rate when I do a set and for a lot of these spikes the OH1 is actually keeping up rather well, a lot better than a lot of the other optical sensors that I've tested. 
Only here in the second part of the training, when I was doing some other exercises, it couldn't fully keep up. Now let's look at some other sessions. Now this is another training session and it shows basically the same pattern. About half the time the OH1 is keeping up well with the Polar H10, but the other half of the time it lags a bit behind and doesn't fully capture these peaks in heart rate. Here we have another training session. And again, at the beginning of the workout with this exercise, it did rather well. But then when I changed to a different exercise, it wasn't able to fully keep up. To make sure that these results are not just valid for me, a subscriber shared his workout data with me, where he wore both the OH1 Plus and a Garmin chest strap. Let's have a look at the results. Now this is a similar plot to what I showed you before. Again, each dot here is a single measurement and they're very transparent. Along the horizontal axis, we have the heart rate according to the Garmin chest strap. And along the vertical axis here, we have the heart rate according to the Polar OH1 Plus. And looking at this plot here, we can see that for my subscriber, there's almost always basically perfect agreement between the heart rate according to the Garmin chest strap and according to the Polar OH1 Plus. If heart rate measurements are along this blue line here, this means there's perfect agreement between the Polar OH1 Plus and the chest strap. For this whole range of heart rates here, basically all measurements are along the blue line. But let's quickly go through a few of the exercises to see if the agreement is indeed as good as it looks here. This is again one example training with the heart rate according to the Polar OH1 Plus in red and the heart rate according to the Garmin chest strap in blue. And indeed we see very good agreement, but let's quickly walk through a few more examples. In most cases, we indeed have almost perfect agreement between the OH1 Plus and the chest strap. There's only two examples where in the beginning of the training it didn't perform perfectly. Here we see one of those examples where in the beginning it really had to catch up with the proper heart rate, but after that it did pretty well. And here is the other training where the agreement was not perfect. But overall, in most cases, there's almost perfect agreement between the OH1 and the chest strap. I'll now quickly display all the training sessions to show you that this is indeed the case. Just as some background information, if you Google for the Polar OH1 Plus, you're also bound to find the Polar OH1 without the plus added. Now, from what I understand, these are basically the same. The main difference is that the Polar OH1 Plus is an update of the Polar OH1, but this was basically a firmware update and this was also transmitted to all the older OH1 models. In addition, the OH1 Plus came with some extra clips so that you can attach it to your goggles while you're swimming. Overall, I'm very satisfied with the performance of the Polar OH1 Plus. It's pretty much on par with the two different chest straps that I compared it against. Only when lifting weights does it run into some difficulties. It cannot always keep up with this peak in heart rate, but otherwise it performs very well. I'm not sure if this is due to the type of weightlifting exercise I'm doing. Since I wear the OH1 Plus on the side of my biceps, it might mean that it has more difficulties in getting accurate measurements when doing exercises that actually involve the biceps. Now, that brings me to my next point. In future tests, it would be super interesting to see if the OH1 Plus performs equally well when wearing it on different parts of my arm. Now, the subscriber that shared his data with me actually wore the OH1 Plus on his forearm and he got arguably even better results than I did. Given the comfort and convenience of the Polar OH1 Plus compared to the Polar H10 chest strap, I would definitely recommend the OH1 Plus to those people who value comfort. It still seems to be very accurate as I tested it in two different people. Now the only problem it had was picking up on those peaks in heart rate during weightlifting. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.